Savannah Chrisley recently had a very interesting guest on her podcast, Unlock with Savannah Chrisley, and we're going to discuss, per usual. I personally do not care for Savannah, but I know a few people do, and they do enjoy her content for whatever reason to each their own, so I'm here to deliver, serve, and entertain, and I'll try my best to keep my very strong opinions about Savannah to myself, at least in this video anyway. Okay, look, I think it's good that Savannah has celebrity guests that she's friends with on because I do like the engagement and interaction between the guest and the host. You get what I'm saying? Like, I like the the friendliness, the, I feel like, you know, they're, they're good. You get what I'm saying? The only thing is, the only kicker about that is, is that we know if you're buddy buddy with somebody and you got them on a podcast or whatever, or you're doing a quote unquote interview on your buddy, you're not going to really get the dirt. You get what I'm saying? So there's like a double-edged sword. Now look, I'm going to tell you my thoughts about Jay DeMarcus from Rascal Flats and Todd Chrisley's friendship. When I seen him first appear on Chrisley Knows Best, I already knew who he was because I listen to country music and I'm from the South. Hello. And I'm going to tell you something. Donnie and myself both thought Jay and Todd, very feminine, nothing wrong with men being feminine. But I found them to be closer than friends. You get what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You get what I'm saying? So I don't know necessarily how deep their friendship... Ew, I shouldn't have said that. Wrong, wrong word. I don't know how close they are. But to me, they come off as very close. Very similar. Very similar. But anyway, y'all, I also... Found it interesting what Jay was talking about, Rascal Flats, you know, just like calling it quits or whatever and never really have an official breakup. That made me wonder, whatever happened to Rascal Flats? Like, did they have some drama or falling out? Do we need to do a deep dive on Rascal Flats and Jay DeMarcus and Todd Chrisley? <laughs> Might be some shady business going on. You never know. Okay, let's just get into Savannah's latest interview with Jay. We have have, who you may recognize from Chrisley Knows Best, Jay DeMarcus. <laughs> <laughs> One of the stars of Chrisley Knows Best. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do now. That's my favorite thing. Because what's your line? In uh, case you don't know, he's obviously from Rascal Flats, which was huge. Yeah, but nobody knows me from Rascal Flats. Why? Every time I get recognized out, I like puff my chest up. I'm like, they're going to want a picture because of all the great music that I've put out. And they walk up and go, we love you on Chris Lee Knows Best. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter that I sold 40 million records and had 17 number ones. They know me from the TV show. Oh, that's that's got to feel so good. It actually is kind of <laughs> nice, actually, that you don't just get recognized for one thing. But that's the power of television, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I've always had a face for TV anyway. I mean, more so a voice, but we'll go with face. That's fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I love you. Okay, so let's go ahead and squash one thing. Yeah. People saying, so are you still friends with the Chrisleys? Yeah, yeah. I, You've it's gotten that. Yeah, I, I find it so bizarre that people ask if you're still friends with someone. I mean, if you're really friends with somebody and you really love somebody, don't you love them unconditionally? That's yeah. the way I've always seen it. And, you know, I, I feel the same way you do. It's like once I'm in the trenches with somebody, I'm not going to leave them. I'm yeah. going to stick by them and I'm going to support them and I'm going to love them mm -hmm. and be there any way I can. So I've always found it a little silly that people go, hey, are you still friends with them? Do you still speak with them? I, it's just so stupid. It really is yeah. because you have like consistently checked in. Yeah. I mean, I love you guys. Yeah. You're, you're a huge part of our lives and yeah. we consider you guys our extended family. And I hope you feel the same way. But I mean, it's just, it's crazy to me. I, I love you guys and I want the best for you guys. And I'm always praying for you and pulling for you and Thank everything. Thank you. So you hadn't jumped ship. That's good. No, nope, I'm sitting <laughs> right beside you here. Well, two feet away from you here. <laughs> I'm done. Okay. So Rascal Flats. Yeah. Good band. 
great. <laughs> Good man. Good no, man. we had an amazing 20-plus year run, you know. That's insane. And I think for us, the, the thing that happened is we burnt the candle at both ends for so long, and we mm-hmm. toured, and we did another record, and we would do press, and we'd tour, and we'd do another record, and we would do press, and it was a never-ending cycle. And it's but it hard. worked. It did work, but it's hard to put the machine down or put the brakes on when everything is cruising along and going full speed ahead. And for us, we should have taken a break at some point, just a year off, just to kind of collect ourselves, Mm -hmm. hit the reset button. And I feel like we got to the point of just being burnt out and not knowing how to stop and how to just go, okay, everybody, we need to take a break for ourselves, for our own mental health and for our own... um, I don't know relationships i think yeah. that everybody needs a little time away <laughs> everybody does need a little time away and i think that maybe we stayed in a couple of years too long when we should have taken a break do you think if you would have taken a break you would still be working on music today i i would like to think so i i think that the uh if we'd had a chance to do the farewell tour in 2020 and the pandemic hadn't happened who knows where we'd be today we might have a greater appreciation for it but i think that we were so uh, at the point of exhaustion and i think we had other things that we wanted to do individually that yeah uh it may we may still be making music but we may still be on the path to trying some other things you know i think Mm -hmm. everybody comes to that point to where no matter how much you love somebody no matter how much you've been through together there are always things that you want to do yourself that may not be in line with the other partners or whatever and i know gary always wanted to do a solo record i always kind of wanted to do my own thing and produce a little more develop other acts I don't know really what Jodon wanted to do, except for go play golf at all the country clubs he was a member of. So, <laughs> but we all kind of had our own things that we wanted to try and do, and that was going to happen sooner or later. Yeah. Okay. So was it? Because you, you guys were like the Backstreet Boys of country music. Well, I, were we, we were. Yeah, I think so. We played you don't our. See it? We played our own instruments though. Oh, too shy. Too yeah, shy. We did. Okay. So. And was, I don't have those moves. You, You've seen me dance. It's terrible. It's terrible. I know. It's terrible. I know. And looking back at y'all's wardrobe in the day, oh my gosh. I mean, it was hip when it was oh, current. Was it? I mean, I don't like to look back at those photos either. It was There were some rough <laughs> times there. I have no idea what was going on with my hair. There was about Thank five or God six God you have switched up your hair. Even just yeah. since I've known you, finally you let it go and you no longer look like like Jimmy Neutron, you know? Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> I thought I was, man, I didn't know I was going to come on here to get insulted. That's awesome. Thanks. Hey, it's okay. You need to feel good about yourself. Come on Savannah's podcast. <laughs> hey, isn't that what you've always said? You need to feel good about yourself. Go to like Chris Lee. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know where you can get torn down, but you build me right back up. See, I do. I'm like a sour patch kid, you know? I like it. Sour than sweet. No, I have questions about my hair back then, too. I have no idea why Allison wanted to hang out with me when it looked that way. Yeah. It was bad. It it was bad. It was. It was bad. But everybody was sort of doing that back then, you know? Yeah, sure. Everyone was doing that. I'm going to keep telling myself that. (laughs) Keep telling yourself that. So when you were on the road, I mean, you said 20 plus years. Well, I've been on the road since I was 15. So even before, long before. I forgot about that. Long before Rascal Flats ever existed, I was on the road always in bands with older guys. And I would spend my summers touring. In fact, I got a scholarship to Lee University. And the only way I could keep it was to tour my summers off of school with the recruiting ensemble, which was called New Harvest at that time. And we'd go around to youth camps and churches and conventions and recruit for the school. So I've literally been on the road most of my entire life. That's crazy. And so was that, did you ever, was it ever a challenge for you? Like, was it just something you were passionate about or did you encounter like the drugs, the- Oh, I was was around all of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was exposed to everything, but I spent a lot of my time in Christian music and uh, most of the drugs were there. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) I'm totally joking. (laughs) I spent a lot of my time in Christian music. So, you know, it was, there there were pretty clean lifestyles out there. And then once I got into the mainstream pop and country world, obviously it was everywhere and it was accessible, but thank God I was not one of those people that had a highly addictive personality and let their 
you know, live circle the toilet after one <laughs> night's bad decision. So it was, it was easy for me. I don't know. I had, I had pretty good self-control. Okay. That's a, cause see, I had Lance then, Bass on yeah, and he spoke about his experience and it was just crazy to hear. Yeah, I think that you can go one way or the other. I was always scared to death that if I tried something. Well, you're a hypochondriac. I am. So I'm, I'm hypersensitive and really worry about the least little thing. Yeah. That's, that's very true. You know that about me. So it always scared me that if I, if I were to try crack one night, that it would destroy my life. And I loved and respected music too much to let it yeah. ruin the thing that I love the most. Well, yeah, because we all share the same family doctor. Yes, we do. <laughs> And we all yes. joke because you and dad, the first sight of anything, oh my God, am I dying? Do I have cancer? Is it this? Is it that? Like <laughs> He told me to stop sending pictures of myself to him while he was at dinner one night with his family. Because <laughs> I always do the, what does this bump look like to you? Does this look bad? No, it's true. I have him on speed dial. He's in my favorites. Every time something <laughs> no. goes wrong. Or if I cough twice in a row. Oh God. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. You're dying. I got cancer. <laughs> of the esophagus. It felt weird. It just felt weird. <laughs> I cannot. Yeah. Okay, so we know you're a hypochondriac. That's uh -huh. a very obvious thing. So you were always just too afraid of screwing up your career. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you that I was perfect by any, we like, all know, by any no. means, but um, I, we had a lot of fun, you know, um, and it just was not something that I was ever interested in trying to screw my life up with. Yeah. I've seen too many people go down that dark rabbit hole of getting addicted to pills and drugs and everything. And it's not pretty when someone you care about spirals out of control. Like yeah. That. Well, it's tough because and I feel like we're very similar in that aspect. Like I've seen it firsthand. So it immediately turned me away from it. Yeah. Versus yeah. other people, you see it, you may fall right into it as well. Yeah, that's so true. And I, you were raised much like I was. My mom drug me to church all the time anyway. So I've got this curse of this guilty conscience. So I always like there's a line out there somewhere when I get close to it and I feel like I'm crossing it. Yeah. I always have this massive weight of guilt. You yeah. Know? But I also feel like not to, you know, over sensationalize it, but I feel like that's the Holy Spirit a little bit too, like kind of checking you and yeah. kind of going, you know, better than this. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know? So I'm grateful for that barometer too, kind of, it's been constantly in my life. Yeah. And you know, my faith is really important to me and that I feel like it's kept me centered more often than not. For sure. Jay goes more into detail and he talks about him uh, meeting his wife, how they got together and all the things, which then sparks Savannah to once again, talk about herself. Okay, that's okay to each their own, but I just wanted to give you a little heads up on what's about to go down Why she's like, yeah, and two, in the South, you're expected to get engaged, get married, blah, blah, blah. You get the point. Mm. Getting engaged, now I gotta get married, I gotta, but knowing you don't want to, but you don't want to hurt the person or you don't, it's, I've been there, I've done it. Oh, have you really? It is not fun. You've been there? I've been there. <laughs> it is not fun. I know. And to have the whole world watch your engagement on national television? bad it yeah. was i knew when it was happening i knew this cannot be happening like i was mad so when we were all together and the cameras were rolling and that wonderful moment you knew in the back of your mind that it, it should not right be thing. happening wow i knew walking out there i was like this can't not be happening so it's like i knew right then why didn't you walk over and say, Jay, get me out of here right now. Let's go to Corner Pub. I don't tell anybody where we're going. Grab the kids and Allison. We're out. You know what? I probably should have. <laughs> Looking back, I should have. But when you're on, to, and to part of me was like, all right, we can make it work. We can get, you know. But I just knew he did it because his career was falling apart. So yeah. he wanted something that wasn't falling apart. I can understand that it, you know, and it goes back to what I was talking about with the flats. Once the train gets to rolling down the tracks, it's really, really hard to slow it down. Yeah. So when it's heading in a certain direction and you feel it and you know it, it's hard to get those brakes and like and slam when on that, them. When it stopped, did, what was the feeling that you had? Was there like heartbreak associated with it or was there relief? You know, honestly, in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm still mourning the loss of the flats, mm. even though there wasn't an official like 
breakup, um, most of my adult life, it's all that I've known. Yeah. Getting on that bus and going out and singing to people and seeing what your music does and how it's touched people is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's better than any drug you could ever be on. Yeah. And to have that stripped away from you, not on your own terms, mm -hmm. uh, was a very painful thing. Mm. And to not have known in March the 7th of 2020 when we were in New Jersey doing our last show that that was the last time the three of us would be on stage together it makes me really sad to oh. think about. Well, because 20, 20 years, you said. Yeah. Like you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, including playing at the bars, probably 24 years, something like that together, you know. Wow. And so to not have had time to give it its proper goodbye and to really savor those moments and you know what? well it's maybe good because i'm tired of seeing three farewell tours from the same person over and over again i feel yeah, like there's yeah. never just one farewell tour it's <laughs> like we're gonna say three or four farewells kiss has been on the road saying goodbye for 10 years now <laughs> literally yeah. then transitioning from no i i i, I don't i haven't transitioned i'm still a man <laughs> okay as of today yeah Going from being on the road for 20 years, and yeah. then you guys had a show. We did. This family Rules. Yeah. That was, how was that experience? Well, I mean, I loved it, and I feel like I was well prepared for it, having yeah. been on your all's show so many times. You were kind enough to bring us on, and uh, every time you needed a ratings boost, we would pop on there. Exactly. Um, we just called very, Jay DeMarcus. Very grateful for that. Now, you know that you and I never got a scene together the whole time. We never got to go do anything fun together the whole time we did that did show. Did we not? You and I were never in the same room in the same scene together, except for your engagement. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. I think we went to lunch one time, but there was like a group of Maybe. Folks. I don't know. I can't remember. But see, you didn't I'm get to. I'm bummed out about that. I know, because that was the life of the party. Yeah. So how was. Too much magic. <laughs> Too much too magic much in magic. the same. <laughs> too much magic. They couldn't have too big personalities. I loved being on the show. I loved filming the show. I loved doing something with my kids. It was great. Dylan was money. Yeah. Money. He's kind of built for it. He he really is. Because yeah. he'd be like, we have to work. I know. Like, we, we have to work. I know. It, it was amazing. I loved it, too. He would like, he was, I think, eight at the time, maybe seven. And he would see where the cameras were, and he would ask me, he'd go, Dad, is that camera going to catch what I'm doing over here? Because I'm doing some funny stuff. <laughs> and I'd be like, funny. I mean, they're not really concerned about, like, capturing just you and what you're doing. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to. And he would always want to know, like, if, if they were going to yeah. get something You want to stop hitting funny. the sofa? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very animated with my hands. You are. Um, but we're going to hear every few seconds. I know. It was fun though. We had a we had a blast doing that. That's amazing. He really is, and his voice yeah is insane. Yeah. Like he is. He's very, only gotten better. He's very musically inclined. It's been fun to watch him develop into really loving and appreciating music. So now, does he want to do music? Yeah, he's he's like I'm starting to teach him piano, so he's starting to make up his own little songs, and he's written his first lyric that we've I've got a song like halfway completed that he's written. 90% really? of it. I've helped him with a couple of things here yeah. and there. But and how is it? It's fantastic. I mean, it sounds like a 10-year-old wrote it, the lyrics, but it's fantastic. <laughs> it sounds like a 10-year-old wrote it. So what's next? Well, I've been uh, on the road with a new band that I put together, Generation Radio, with mm -hmm. some... It really started during the pandemic Okay. out of sheer boredom. Like nobody could play, nobody could go out and be in front of a crowd. So I called up one of my dear friends, Jason Sheff, who was the lead singer and the bass player for Chicago yep. for 32 years. Remember, I met him um, at the, what's the Italian spot in Belmede? I guess it's not there anymore. Giovanni's. Giovanni's. West. Giovanni's yes. West. I hate that they shut that down. I know. I loved that place. I hate that they shut that down. I know. I love that place. Um, so I called him up. I called my buddy, Dean Castronovo, who had been in Journey for 17 years. And he played drums, but he sings like Steve Perry. I mean, he's incredible. I called him up. I said, what do you guys think about just making some music just to have some fun? And yeah. I called another couple of friends of mine, Tom Yankton and Chris Rodriguez, who I'd known for years here in town. Awesome guitar players and singers in their own right. 
session guys and really great singers and performers. We camped out in my home and recorded a bunch of songs and put out a record last year, August of last year. And it turned into this really fun thing to where we would go out and do shows, corporate events, private shows and things like that fairs and festivals and do all of our hits from all of our bands together so That's we'll do awesome. like rascal flats and then we'll do a journey song do a chicago song and now we have steve ferroni uh, from tom petty and the heartbreakers because dean went back to journey so steve is out playing drums with us now now we do tom petty songs which that's really amazing yeah. that is so fun is like i said y'all comment below and let me know if you want me to do a deeper dive into Jay DeMarcus and Todd Chrisley's friendship specifically. Like and share this video. I really would appreciate it. I've been seeing so many of you comment and saying that you have been praying for me. I'm in your thoughts and prayers and I want to say thank you so so much. I will be back soon with an update and I can't wait to show y'all the results of my surgery. I love you for watching and I will see y'all in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest and greatest celebrity news and gossip.